Anyway, <laughs> next time you hear this, I'll have it totally digested. Uh, I broke into a song recently in my kitchen, and I have no idea where this song came from, but it turns out it was, uh, I think the Everly Brothers sang this song, so I wanted to... Wake up, little Susie. I think Elvis Presley also did the song. But yeah, you you probably know what it is. Once you hear it. it was a bridge. I started singing that bridge one day. I'm thinking like, where did this come from? I thought maybe I should learn this song. Yeah. <laughs> Degrees. 
In my rearview mirror, a spider built a web for me, frost growing bulldog puppy teeth on top of each thread in a row, with fractal whiskers slung like stalactites below. Where a stegosaur bug and a spiky caterpillar both snow, bump nose to nose. So I must ask, so I must know, on snow days, where do spiders go? <laughs> That actually happened in my rearview mirror, just outside the window of the car. You know how they make their little homes in there? Well, anyway, this is uh, sort of a fantasy. It's called the Gypsy Folk. Our science was old when the pyramids were young. My forefathers came to this continents when all the continents were one. Our race is a cloud-like sentience sprung from the nimbuli, the nebulae of the first generation of suns. What you see as sigils in black grimmery are imagination's circuitry. Okay. We are elven mysteries. We ourselves words with no known ancestry. We step from stones abandoned, great faces half-finished, leaks from their quarries, leaning on a witch called the witch. We are we. We watch your world in our dreams as we sleep. We whisper wild thoughts in your inner ear. We are we. You wait for us. You wait for us. But we are already here. <laughs> I, I, I dislike reading poems from laptops and uh, such, but my printer died today. So, uh, oh boy, oh, there we go. I don't have to go and look and look and look and look. Uh, I don't know if you're like me, but uh, I submit books and poems every month, mostly all my discretionary money to go to contests and try to get published and this and that. And it's been a chore for eight years doing it and doing it and doing it. And what you realize is every time you send them money and they send you back the Dear John letter, if you know what a Dear John letter is, they send you back a letter saying, don't take this to heart, but we didn't use your poem. They also send you an invite to join next year's yeah. thing. So it's hard for me not to think that this is a big mill churning thousands of thousands of dollars. Because a warning, I like to give people what I call a reality check. There is one third of a billion people in the United States of America, and a lot of them write poetry. So there's like eight or nine major markets for poetry, and they get a lot of stuff sent to them. So it's really the chances of you actually getting published or anything like that are infinitesimally small. But unless you want to self-publish or do something uh, like that, which isn't gratifying, because it's you want someone to say you are good enough to be published, like books used to be done. You know, you are it was a great book. Let's publish it. You know, <laughs> now it's not like that anymore. But anyway, so I still go through the rounds. Well, I finally uh, got a honorable me uh, mention in uh, the uh, Writers Digest Poetry Contest for last year. It was for rhymed poetry. Now, i got to tell you something. Before you clap, think about this. I'm not going to get any dates at the bar with this. <laughs> there were 40 honorable mentions in the poems that rhyme category. So I'm not getting all puffed up. But, I mean, it does prove that occasionally uh, a deity on a passing cloud pisses and your head gets wet. <laughs> So, this is called From a Tubercular Ward in 1970, site 1917, and I gotta tell you it was bad. And many people died in the influenza as they did in World War I. It killed, I think, what was it, like one-sixth of the world? So it's hard to, so, and this is about a guy recovering in a hospital, but on the battlefield somewhere between the facing sides. With the dawn, the doors of day thrown open. The chandelier of cumuli are dropped from heaven, and smacked by wind, the hills awaken to 
to see rabbits leap and deer greet with leaps, a great green meal, for now night's fast is broken. Our day is slow, the antiseptic's mist of these halls, the scent of suffering skin in these wards to leaven. Out there, out there, out there in the moving air, in the sinewy depths of the wildflower gusts and nautical cords of buxom winds, out there beyond the padlocks of this greasy glass, I see a physical song. Uh, the maiden mares of gates left open have come along to him with leaps this dawn of dawn. I here ache to break my reflection on this glass and make fast wheels of corpse limbs to run with maiden mares, their haunches strong as iron, pliant as wind, sneezing steam, blood hot with song, bless them. For they have set in my still breast a beat, that of an army that has snatched victory from defeat. Bless them, for they dance at dawn for me. And it is a mercy, a sweet mercy to see these young girl horses leap in their maiden ring to leap and sport at dawn for me. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Leo. Next we have Chris. Come on up here. Okay, I'm like a lame, I don't mean that. I don't mean no stinking lame. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I am singing with the Women's Choral Society oh. in Eugene. This is a group of about a hundred women who get together. We have two concerts a year. This group has been singing for 87 years. Now, wow. Not the individual. <laughs> but, um, so our, our concert this year has, uh, which will be on January 12th, uh, our audience consists mostly of friends and family of the singers, as you would expect, so I expect to see you all there. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the theme this year is winter season and women's suffrage. Interestingly, we have a song called Snow Day. <laughs> I thought, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no. um, so I'm going uh, to sing you the alto part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of my favorite song that we're doing uh, in our January concert, if I don't faint first. <laughs> okay. Everybody says don't, everybody says don't, everybody says don't. It isn't right, don't, it isn't nice. Everybody says don't, everybody says don't, everybody says don't walk on the grass, don't disturb the peace, don't skate on the ice. Well, I say do, I say walk on the grass it is meant to feel, I say sail, walk a uh, tilt with the windmill, tilt with the windmill, if you fail, you fail. Everybody says don't do it, says don't do it, says don't get out of line. When they say that then, lady, that's a sign. Nine times out of ten, lady, I'm doing just fine. Make just a ripple, come on, be brave. This time a ripple, next time a wave. That's my idea. <laughs> Everybody says, mustn't rock the boat, mustn't touch a thing. Everybody says, don't. Everybody says, wait. Everybody says, can't fight City Hall, can't upset the cart, can't.
can't laugh at the king. Well, I say try. I say laugh at the kings or they'll make you cry. Lose your poise. Fall if you have to, but lady, make a noise. Everybody says don't. Everybody says wait. Really? No, everybody says can't. Everybody says wait around for miracles. That's the way the world is made. I insist on miracles. If you do them, miracles, nothing to them. I say don't. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Beautiful Chris, thank you. Uh, is Kevin here? That's the gentleman who left. Kevin left? I was not. Is he outside? Oh. No, I think he didn't matter? realize it was going to take be so long. Oh. 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 Yeah, this other person here lives out of town and she said, thank you for your kindness, I'll sign up before 7.30 next month. Okay, um, that was Joy? She only stayed for yeah. an hour each time. Okay, oh. Kevin. So we'll find out where Kevin lives and we'll knock his door one more way. Okay, we got nine minutes. Go. Yeah, sometimes in the community, I'll make sure. Yeah, okay. And that knocks out Joy. We have no Joy. Aww. But we do have Kim. Yay! 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 The chef. She's the major. The chef. She's the major. Everybody. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Thanks for coming to our little humble abode here, everybody. Oh, it's good to see y'all. Uh, because I was getting ready all day, I didn't really pick anything out until just a minute ago. But uh, handy dandy E.E. E. Cummings. Oh, yeah. A little hard to read cold sometimes, but I just. Uh, I picked some out. Some are familiar to me, and some I just found a second ago because there are. I don't know, 300 and whatever, 15 poems in here. So I don't know them all. Um, so I'm just going to read a few that I found that I liked as I was sitting there. Who knows? Oh, this is number 73, by the way. 73. Oh, okay. E.E. Cummings, number 73. Who knows if the moon's a balloon coming out of a keen city in the sky filled with pretty people and if you and I should get into it, if they should take me and take you into their balloon, why then, we'd go up higher with all the pretty people than the houses and steeples and clouds, go sailing away and away, sailing into a keen city which nobody's ever visited, where always it's spring and everyone's in love and flowers pick themselves. <laughs> Yeah, this one. It's number 77. <laughs> the wind is a lady who... Nope. Sorry. The wind is a lady with bright, slender eyes who moves at sunset and who touches the hills without any reason. I have spoken with this indubitable and green person. Are you the wind? Yes. Why do you touch flowers as if they were unalive, as if they were ideas? Because, sir, things which in my mind blossom will stumble beneath a clumsiest disguise, appear capable of fragility and indecision. Do not suppose these, without any reason and otherwise, roses and mountains different from the sun I am who wanders imminently across the renewed world. To me, said the wind, being a lady in a green dress who touches the fields at sunset. <laughs> so E.E. E. Cummings, um, one of the kinds of poems he's famous for is uh, romantic poems. He was uh, had an affair with a woman who he was deeply in love with, and during that period there are a lot of poems which I would not feel comfortable reading aloud, but which I really <laughs> like. But this one is of that genre, but uh, not, it won't make me blush too hard as I'm reading it. 
I have found what you are like the rain, who feathers frightened fields with the superior dust of sleep, wields easily the pale club of the wind, and swirl justly souls of flowers, strike the air in utterable coolness, deeds of green thrilling light with thin, new fragile yellows lurch and press in the woods which stutter and sing. And the coolness of your smile is stirring of birds between my arms, but I should rather than anything have, almost when hugeness will shut quietly, almost your kiss. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> 77, huh? That was, uh, no, that was uh, 93. So Close. then I got to 147, and uh, another thing that E.E. E. Cummings is known for is sort of political poetry of the time. And so this, uh, I don't know, you know, it's a political time, so I thought you might enjoy this one. This is number 147. Next to, of course, God, America, I love you, land of the pilgrims, and so forth. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early, my country, tis of centuries come and go, and are no more what of it we should worry in every language, even deaf and dumb. Thy sons acclaim your glorious name by gory, by jingo, by G, by gosh, by gum. Why talk of beauty? What could be more beautiful than the, these heroic happy dead who rushed like lions to the roaring slaughter? They did not stop to think they died. Instead, then shall the voice of liberty be mute, he spoke, and drank rapidly a glass of water. And there will always be a pile of books of random poet books up here. If anyone comes unprepared and wants to jump in, you can always grab a book. Right. Good move. Thank you, Kim. And as the Greeks would say, parasameorea, which means we pass the time in a beautiful way. So that's it for tonight. See you next time.